Hello everyone on the internet and YouTube and welcome back to my channel. I'm Tea Addict and today I am bringing you guys a video that has been requested once or twice, a few times. We are going to be taking an in-depth tour, an in-depth look at my off-camera build a city challenge, Hanson River. This is a neighborhood that I started, I don't even remember when, maybe 2018. It was definitely running by 2019, but I don't remember when I actually started it. And I was inspired by a channel here on YouTube called Sims and and wins. Uh, she was doing a Builder City challenge on her YouTube channel and I was watching it and I thought that looked really fun and I wanted to try it out so that was my inspiration uh, and I looked up the rule set that she was using which was the original Builder City challenge rules. I don't know if they actually are the original Builder City challenge rules or not but that's what I used as a base when I started my Builder City challenge and I created this terrain in SimCity 4. By the way if you're interested in how to do that my friend Alex Alexar just the other day uploaded a really good video on how to create your own custom neighborhood. I had actually watched a video by Jessa on the Jessa channel about how to create custom terrains in SimCity 4 a long sort of time ago so I was like oh let me try this out that looks like fun so I tried it out and I started this neighborhood. So the original Builder City challenge rules state that you start the neighborhood with just one family. Now these rules have been sort of changed and amended by various people along the way. Uh, most notably probably was Pleasant Sims when she started doing her Biddle City challenge. A lot of people were obviously watching Pleasant Sims and she released sort of an altered rule set. Other people have altered the rule set as well but in the original rules that I was using it was one family. You started with one one sim and a pool of townies. So back in the day, back in 2018, 2019, I actually didn't know anything about creating clean neighborhoods, uh, so empty neighborhoods without any townies. If I had known about it back then, I would have created my own custom townies. So I started this neighborhood with one sim, Jebediah Hansen, and the default pool of townies. People like Marissa Bendett, Ivy Cooper, Randy London, just so many names that you if you've played a lot of The Sims 2, you're gonna know who I'm talking about, those default, Goopy Gills Carbo, you know, those default townies. So some of those townies actually have been married into the neighborhood, so we're gonna meet them as we go through the tour. Others uh, are now all dead. And the reason that most of them are actually no longer in existence in this neighborhood is because I actually had to rebuild this neighborhood. I had to recreate it. And that was a project that I did sort of over the last year or so, uh, which was very <laughs> challenging. And I didn't do a perfect job of it, but I did the best I could. Basically, my neighborhood got corrupted. Yes, actually corrupted. I have watched the video by April Black, which is a fantastic video and you should watch it if you haven't. But yes, no, it was actually corrupted. I had deleted character files from my my documents. I had my family trees were all messed up. I had duplicated characters. Sometimes I had like four of the same sim. Like it was it was a mess. So I had to rebuild the neighborhood. So those default townies who got married in obviously are still part of the neighborhood. They're now my playable sims. The rest of those default townies are gone and I now have a pool of custom townie sims but yes yeah, so back in the day uh, we settled in Hanson River and the first iteration of this neighborhood that I did it had this road sort of coming in here where Hanson Farm was founded over here it met up with this highway which at the time just came down and met this road and then this road went up through this way and there was a very small square at the top of this hill which I envisioned would be where we founded some community lot businesses along the way I actually went back into SimCity 4 I added in a lot of extra roads because I can foresee this town getting substantially bigger as we go but originally it was quite a simple road network um, and there's this really cool tool for The Sims 2 called Hood Replacer where you can basically update your neighborhood terrain if you have the know-how so I can do that. Um, I'm actually thinking I might have added in too many roads and I kind of want to take some out now but <laughs> we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But yeah uh, Hanson River was meant to be a fertile farming valley and Sim Nation had uh, scouted it and said yep we want to you know found a new community here so Jebediah Hanson put his hand up and said I'll go settle this farming uh, valley and we're going to call it Hanson River after Jebediah Hanson. So this town has a lot of history it has a lot of lore being a neighborhood that is sort of like five years old at this point 
you would think it would be further along, but because we sort of ran into that whole thing where I had to rebuild the whole thing, it's not actually as far along as it otherwise would have been. But there is a lot of history uh, to go through with this neighborhood. So today I'm going to focus on talking through the main family, the Hanson family and their descendants. And then we'll probably do maybe another video, maybe two, to talk about the rest of the neighborhood because there are actual other families that have moved in along the way too. But anyway, without further ado, let's talk about the Hanson family. So Jebediah Hanson settled into Hanson River all by himself with a group of I guess in my head canon the townies were kind of like living in a nearby town or maybe they were tourists or people traveling through the district so for a long time it was only Jebediah and it was quite lonely but eventually he did meet a townie by the name of Kaelin Spitzig and Kaelin Spitzig is a red-headed townie they had great chemistry and so they actually got married Kaelin was a family sim she wanted to have a big happy family and together they had six children Amy Benjamin, Carmen and Deborah, who were twins, and then Edward and Frank, who were also twins. These Sims have since spread out across the neighborhood and I'm going to take you through all of them in detail one by one, starting with actually the younger Sim, which is Frank Hansen. Well, technically he and his twin Edward are the youngest of the family, but Frank was always kind of like the baby of the family in my head because <laughs> he was born second when they were born. And yeah, he was always just the baby of the family. So let's jump into the main family farm lot, which is now Frank's. And I will introduce you to Frank and his lovely wife. So this is the Hanson family farm as it stands. Jebediah, when he came here, started out with basically nothing. I think I let him keep the default 20,000 simoleons or however much a single sim starts with. So he bought the land, which was quite expensive because it's quite a big lot. Um, and I made it a big lot on purpose because I knew I wanted him to be a farmer. So he bought the land, he established his garden and he started to build his house. For a long time, he was just selling his fruits and vegetables on the side of the road because he couldn't afford to buy a community lot business at that point in time. And unfortunately, Unfortunately, it, it took him quite a long time to unlock his community lot business simply because he and his wife were popping out babies faster than they could pay for them. <laughs> These babies all needed beds to sleep in, the babies all needed places to stay, you know, things to eat, showers, toilets, all that kind of thing. And so building the house kind of took priority over starting their community lot business for a long time. Eventually though, they did start a community lot business, which is the Hanson River General Store. And I will take you there after we tour the house. But here is the farm house I'll take you inside in a moment and just out the back here behind the chickens we actually have the gravestones of Jebediah and Kaylin uh, they're still here we don't have a cemetery in the town yet when we do we'll probably move them there uh, but we need to raise the tax money to have that so yeah they do have a lovely greenhouse that was a recent addition when they had a little bit of cash to spare because greenhouses are pricey as in this game and here is the farm itself so they grow a combination of the Max's plants plus Azareth's custom garden plants and uh, right now a lot of them need to be weeded so Frank needs to get to work the garden is looking a little bit sad because it has actually just finished winter so uh, yeah the garden's been dormant for the last season so this here is Frank Hansen and over here we have his lovely wife Marion. These two met very late in life. Frank for a very long time was a bit of a lone wolf. He spent all of his spare time just working in his garden, continuing on his father's legacy, working at the general store, and for a long time never really felt the need to get married and to find someone to settle down with. That was until the rest of his family finally moved out of the farmhouse. For a long time he was sharing the house with his siblings particularly his eldest brother Benjamin and his family were living at home for a very long time but suddenly once they all decided to move out Frank was kind of like actually it's a little bit lonely here I wouldn't mind finding someone to settle down with after all and maybe starting a family of my own so Marion was a customer at the general store and you can see by her waddle she is pregnant she was a customer at the general store who caught Frank's eye on one of his many scope rooms to try to see if there was anyone <laughs> attractive at the shop and eventually they did strike up a relationship and get married. They are now pregnant and expecting their first and probably only child because Frank and Marion are actually quite old uh, for, for Sims in my neighborhood. So Marion is actually 19 days away from becoming an elder. I have a 60 day adult lifespan. So she's definitely towards the end of her lifespan as an adult and her fertility at this point will be quite low. So she is pregnant, which is a miracle, but I think this will probably be their only child. Marion, by default is actually one of the Bon Voyage Sims. 
I think she's part of like a tourist family or she might be a tourist or someone who works in a Bon Voyage neighborhood. Um, so in my head canon, she's actually from Three Lakes and she raised horses there. So she's an equestrian sim. She's a good sim. She's friendly. She's perceptive and she loves being outside, which is one of the main reasons that she and Frank get along. She is a family sim, as I mentioned, and she, her lifetime want is to reach her golden anniversary, which shouldn't be a problem for these sims. They've been married for a while already and I can't see anything getting between them at this point in time. So Frank is eco-friendly, a green thumb, has a great sense of humor, but he is a loner and he is frugal. The Hanson family, while being the founding family of Hanson River, have never been overly rich. They have always been a little bit on the struggle town side for money, especially, yeah, having six children in the first generation was pretty intense and trying to start a business and everything. So yeah, they've always been a little bit strapped for cash and Frank definitely inherited that kind of frugality from his parents who always had to sort of scrimp and save and cut corners to make ends meet where they could. But they do actually get by pretty well now. They have a level 10 business, which is their general store, and Marion actually runs that for Frank because Frank is an extremely shy sim and he would much rather just spend all day at home with his plants rather than attempting to run a business, handle employees, customers, and do all of that kind of stressful work. <laughs> Marion is much better at all that than he is, so he just lets Marion handle that for him. Of course, while she is currently heavily pregnant, this is what dear Marion spends most of the day doing while the business runs itself. I don't even think she needs to come into work at the minute because we do have a manager Chandler who can manage the place for us so probably should have stayed at home today but that's okay and just to give you a little tour of the farmhouse if we come in the front door here originally the house I distinctly remember this was literally just this tiny room here this was the first kind of like structure that we built on the lot for um, Jebediah to live in it was just like a one-room shack but now it's just a little entry for you with uh, Kaylin's old sewing machine. She was very much into sewing when she was alive, as well as a uh, sim wardrobe produce packing station. Uh, through here we have the lovely dining room and kitchen area. Uh, that, this handmade wood mirror here was made by Benjamin. He is into woodworking. Uh, through into the sort of family living room space and over here above the mantelpiece we of course have the whole family, as well as uh, some little excuse me lightning, <laughs> smaller photos of Jebediah and Caitlin. Uh, through this door back here just leads to a very simple laundry room. A little bit sad, probably needs a bit of an update, but you know, when we have the money. <laughs> and then if we head upstairs, this door here leads into uh, Frank and Marion's master bedroom. We have a bassinet here ready for the baby when it is born. Oop, and we've got some bills delivered, 834 smolines. Ouch, that's a lot of money. Uh, through this door here is the bathroom, uh, which is, yeah, apparently a little bit gross. I'm sorry, Frank. Oh, it must be that your pregnant wife has been vomiting in the toilet. You want to clear that up or? <laughs> anyway, uh, through this door here is a spare bedroom and office, little study area. So this is where we manage the farm. There's the deed to our store and Frank's uh, nature enthusiasm plaque. He is uh, obviously a gold standard gardener and max on nature enthusiasm. Then we have one more small bedroom down the back here, which used to be Frank and Edward's bedroom. I do remember that too. I think eventually the, we will turn this into the nursery when the baby ages up into a toddler. And so Frank and Marion just live a very peaceful, content, happy life out here on the Hanson family farm, doing their best to carry on the legacy of Jebediah and Kaylin and uh, absolutely just besotted with one another. And yeah, I love playing this family. They just fill me with gladness and happiness. Hopefully one day they can stop struggling so much for cash. Fingers crossed. Right, so now that we're done with the main Hanson family farm, we're actually going to meet the rest of the Hanson family children in the order in which they were born. So starting with Amy Hanson, who is now Amy Bertino. So Amy Hanson met Orlando Bertino, a little towny kid, when she was just a little girl here in Hanson River and fell head over heels in love with him. She and Orlando have built up this beautiful home here in Hanson River and they are actually the richest and most successful family in the river to date. So yeah, they live here in this bespoke build house, which I have renovated quite extensively, complete with a beautiful kind of outdoor eating and entertaining area, a landscape yard, a fairly empty shed at this point in time. Oh, hello there. And around the corner, we do have a little gazebo as well. So it's a 
beautiful idyllic house that they have made into their family home. And so here is Amy Bertino. She is now an elder, which you will see. Amy Bertino has always been a fairly shy and reserved sim. She has always had a passion for literature and books. Uh, thank you, Maid, for cleaning our house. Yep, that's great. And her other passion has been keeping active, fit and healthy. So she married Orlando, as I said, pretty much as soon as she aged up to an adult and she and Orlando began working on an empire, which has expanded across the town. But Amy's role in the empire was always a little bit more behind the scenes. In the early days of their businesses, uh, she would work on things like restocking and occasionally do cash register as well, but she always left all the sales work to Orlando. That was never her thing. So yeah, she is a uh, Sagittarius. She is a knowledge sim and she wants to maximize all of her seven skills. Currently, she's doing pretty well. She needs some more cleaning, logic, charisma, and a little bit more mechanical, and then she will get there. And yes, she does have quite a few talent badges from being raised in a family and having her own family, which were heavily involved in business gameplay. As I mentioned, she is painfully shy. She is a little bit brooding. Uh, she is also a bookworm and she has always sort of had a tendency to yeah just get carried away in, in fantasy worlds of romance and, and wonder. She is a bit of a perfectionist, she's a computer whiz, and she is a supernatural fan. And here we have Amy's lovely husband, now also an elder sim, Orlando Bertino. Many of you, as I said, who have played Pleasant View will know this man as a shy little kid who just pops up everywhere, comes home with your kids from school. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much how he and Amy met. Orlando Bertino is a popularity sim in my game. He has always wanted to be very influential in the community. He wanted to make a name for himself and his family, and he has very much so succeeded. He is a music and dance sim, and he is currently sat up Upstairs in their music room, uh, which reflects their main business, which is a community lot called Sonata Bertino, which he and Amy started as a little shack in a tiny little community lot a long time ago and worked its way up to level 10. Their business, Sonata Bertino, sells music instruments to the town and can bring in anywhere from 20 to 30,000 Smolians in a day. It's a rank 10 business, it's very successful. But so Orlando is a popularity sim. He wants to have 20 simultaneous best friends and his traits are that he is a born salesman, ambitious, charismatic, a virtuoso, and a bit of a workaholic. So with such a workaholic husband and such an affinity for books, romance, novels, and a pretend world in her own mind, Amy did often feel a little bit neglected and lonely by her hardworking husband. He only of course wanted the best for her and his family, but Amy, struggled a little bit when she was younger to feel really desirable and really wanted and really valued and that did lead to some marital problems that we're going to talk about uh, in a future family but just know that it always hasn't been super smooth sailing between these two sims. However, for the most part, their family life has been happy and together they did have two beautiful daughters, Giselle and Hannah Bertino, who we did meet Hannah briefly in my school's video if you if you watched that one. So Hannah Bertino no longer lives at home, so we'll meet her in a minute, but this is their daughter Giselle. So she inherited the handsome blue eyes, but the rest of her face is very much Orlando <laughs> through and through. Giselle is an interesting sim. She is a pleasure sim aspiration and I believe her secondary might be popularity yes so she has always wanted to just have fun and make friends that has been her goal in life since she was young and unfortunately because her parents were so well off she never really had to work that hard so she could kind of get away with sort of just doing not much with her life and that has led to her being a little bit of a freeloader of her parents who never really wants to move out she is a Gemini so she is extremely outgoing like her father and I think her popularity and her ability to talk to people always sort of blind Orlando a little bit to Giselle's problems <laughs> whereas Amy has always seen a little bit more the the danger with Giselle of never really amounting to anything. Her traits are that she is also a virtuoso like her father, she is athletic like her mother, she is a diva, a coward and she is a mooch. So she is she does have skills musical and athletic. I think she's already capped out on creativity skill yeah and uh, she is fairly athletic sim but she is also a bit of a diva. She likes to just have things her way. She likes things to be just so and just the way she likes them. Her cowardice is reflected in her unwillingness to move out of home and try to strike out on her own business venture. She would much rather just continue to rub elbows with her father in the right way and just take over his businesses one day and let them be ran by the managers and just be the woman at the top who collects the cash at the end of the day. So she is also a mooch uh, living off her parents. Uh, she still lives in 
her childhood bedroom as well as you can see here she still has a lot of her childhood toys she did originally share this with her sister this room here but yeah she she's not feeling any particular need to move out of home so that pretty much sums up the Bertino family. This is their beautiful house. It is one of my favorite homes that I've ever re redesigned and, and decorated and all that kind of thing. I think it just came together so well. Uh, this big pool room and the music room upstairs I, are both extensions to the original bespoke house that I built on. Uh, the rest of the house I've just sort of redecorated. But Sonata Bertino is not the only business that this very successful family own and run. Being a popularity and secondary pleasure sim, Orlando Bertino was often very sort of saddened by how little there was to do in Hanson River in the way of entertainment. And so with the proceeds of Sonata Bertino, they began a second business lot called the Bertino Bar and Grill. And welcome to the Bertino Bar and Grill. So this lot was the first ever, I guess, recreational community lot that Hanson River ever got. And as I mentioned, it was started by Orlando who just was always really sad that there wasn't enough fun things to do in the neighborhood. Giselle, if you could just not with that while I'm recording. Yes, you're a wonderful singer, darling, but uh, it's a bit much. <laughs> So right now we have a little music karaoke area and then in here is the bar and grill. So we do grill burgers and wraps and hot dogs and things every night um, and serve them out to the customers. Once you pay to get in, uh, the bar and grill is served free. I do actually probably want to redo the way the slot works to have like a buffet table or something like that. Um, and we also, I haven't actually finished this lot yet. Um, this whole area out here I need to renovate. I want to make this into sort of like an outdoor, indoor beer garden kind of vibe, maybe like with a, a bigger table. Um, eventually I might also turn this business into an actual full-fledged restaurant now that I've got my mods working well for running restaurants. So uh, yeah, it will probably continue to be upgraded as we go, but uh, this is this business has never been the most profitable. This has always been kind of Orlando's Orlando's passion project for the neighborhood to, to start this, this lot. And uh, this is a lot though that his dear daughter, Giselle, is actually quite passionate about and wants to see succeed and be successful. Because again, as a pleasure sim, these kind of lots are so important to her and she feels that these are important for the neighborhood. So she will probably continue to put a lot of work and money into this lot as Orlando will eventually retire. Uh, but so right now the, the Bertino family are the richest family in the neighborhood. They currently have a net wealth of ri a ridiculous amount. I don't even know how much. Um, they've both Orlando and Amy have about 50,000 simoleons in their personal bank accounts, plus they have another 50,000 in their family funds. And they actually just donated about 120,000 simoleons to pay for the school. So this family is very rich. Yeah. As for the other Bertino daughter, Hannah, she actually lives here in the neighborhood, not too far from her parents' house, in her own little mid-century modern, beautiful little house that I think I downloaded from Mod The Sims, to be honest. I, um, I didn't build a lot of the houses in this neighborhood. But uh, yeah, so she actually bought this place with the help of her parents. I believe her parents helped her out with like half of the cost of the house, and then she saved up and paid for the other half of the house. I think it was something like that. And uh, this is where she lives and is sort of having a great time living her own her own dream life. So Hannah Bertino we did meet in my school's video. She is an artist. So she is a popularity sim and her lifetime want is to become the visionary level 10. She is ambitious, artistic, easily impressed, a hopeless romantic and a little bit over emotional. So Hannah's life she always felt like she was a little bit in the shadow of her older sister Giselle. Although they were both very popular sims they both fell in love with the same guy when they were teenagers as well I think and both had their first kiss with the same guy if I'm remembering that correctly and um, she always felt a bit overshadowed by by Giselle and Giselle's just such an outgoing charismatic person and she is also very outgoing but she's also a lot nicer and always sort of took that back seat compared to her her sister Giselle. She also was way more ambitious than Giselle and Giselle kind of frustrates her a little bit with her freeloading ways um, and so for Hannah it was never like she never wanted to stay at home and just coast off of her parents. She always wanted to make something of herself and be her own sim and live her own life. 
So Hannah actually converted her house's garage into her own little studio space. She does have, of course, a cat piano, being a Bertino. And her in her little garage, she actually runs a little home business that she opens up very occasionally to sell any paintings that she might have done. Right now, she just sold out. She doesn't have any paintings for sale. So this, this place only opens very sporadically. And then in the meantime, she also teaches art at the school to help out with the kids. The school is very important to both Hannah and Giselle Bertino because when they were kids, they had no option but to go to school out of town. And so having somewhere local for the kids of Hanson River to be educated is really important. And I believe Hannah actually did privately donate a little bit of money towards the schools as well as her parents who donated the bulk of the money um, because she was so enthusiastic about seeing, yeah, a local space for the kids uh, to, to learn and grow. Hannah is still single right now. I think I had her dating someone in my old Hanson River, but when I had to rebuild the hood, I got rid of all my townies and I didn't re-import her boyfriend, which was my fault. So uh, being a hopeless romantic, she is sort of on the search for someone to, to date and to have a life with. She's still very young though. She's still got lots of time. So we'll have to see who she can meet. Uh, she knows a lot of kids, <laughs> all the kids in the neighborhood, of course. Yeah, we'll have to see who she can meet uh, along the way. This guy here, which who she has two bolts with, Kulap Zeng, is the guy that both she and Giselle had their first kisses with as teenagers. And uh, you can see they're quite distant now, no longer, no longer very good friends. Um, Hannah does... Uh, at least in my old neighborhood, throw a lot of parties as well. She really loves entertaining and just having her house full of friends and, and, and liveliness. So uh, that is something we will probably continue to do with her once she meets some of the new townies. And seeing as how Hannah wants to be a visionary level 10, the only way to unlock the art career in the Builder City Challenge rules that I play by is to actually have a gallery lot on in the neighborhood. So Hannah is hoping to save up enough money to actually open up a separate community lot, which is a gallery, an art gallery business, which she will run. And then she will be able to enter into the painter career and hopefully become the visionary level 10. Right now, her little home business hasn't made a lot of money. And uh, yeah, it's very slow going, which is part of the reason why she took that extra job teaching art at the school to save up that money a little bit faster. So our next family that I'd like to introduce you to is Benjamin Hansen's family. So Benjamin Hansen was the second born to Jebediah and Kay Lynn and the first born son and he and his wife and three daughters live in this little bespoke house here. So Benjamin is actually just a couple of days away from aging up into an elder at this point. He has lived a very long, very full life. It was always the intention that Benjamin would sort of be the one to take over the farm and continue on Jebediah's legacy there at home. But farming was honestly never Benjamin's passion. His passion was always in handiness, in making things and in creating things with his own two hands. So he took up woodworking and uh, started his own sort of little business selling woodworking at the general store. And then eventually when he met his wife, Marissa, Marissa Bendit, yes, and they their daughters were born, they decided to strike out on their own, have their own house, have their own legacy, hey, and Benjamin uh -huh. started his own business. Benjamin is a popularity sim, and his lifetime want is to own five top-level businesses. I don't think he's going to quite get there, but at least we own one top-level business. <laughs> his traits are that he is ambitious, wanting to own five top-level businesses. He does love the outdoors. He takes a lot of pride in his garden, and uh, the business that he runs is actually a home hardware and gardening store. So he does love being outdoors. He, he really values having a beautifully sort of manicured and landscaped lawn. He is a friendly guy, he is handy, and he is a bit sort of naive and, and hopeful. He's a bit e easily impressed by a lot of things. And so Benjamin met his lovely wife, Marissa, formerly Marissa Bendette, as a new adult and the two of them fell in love fairly quickly. I believe he was attracted to blonde sims and so the two got married and started their own family. Marissa is a fortune sim in my game and she has devoted her life to helping Benjamin build up their businesses and she's always wanted to open up her own gym. She is a fitness hobby sim as you can see here she takes yoga very seriously and I think it would be really cute if Marissa were to open up like a yoga studio in the neighborhood so that is sort of 
her eventual goal. Her lifetime want is to become the prestidigitator. That's not going to happen. So I might actually look at changing that. <laughs> her traits are that she is athletic. She has no sense of humor. She is quite a serious sim and she's quite grouchy. And so I kind of figured that made sense for her that she doesn't really get jokes <laughs> particularly well. Marissa's always struggled a little bit to get along with the rest of the Hanson family. And I figured that was kind of why, because they're all sort of fun loving, good humored people. She's a light sleeper, she is eco-friendly and she is also a vegetarian so she takes her health extremely seriously and uh, yeah isn't isn't shy to talk to anyone about being eco-friendly for for the environment. Uh, this family has also never been particularly rich uh, similar to the original uh, family they had to take out a big loan to pay for their house because when they moved off of the farm the farm was struggling as it always is and they didn't have enough money to kind of buy a big enough house for all of their three daughters without taking out a loan so they have been slowly paying off their loan their home loan for most of their lives I think it's all but paid off now so they had three daughters here we have Helena Hansen their eldest and she was actually I think the first grandchild born in game and you'll also notice I messed up my alphabetical naming convention which I use in this hood uh, because I have two H's I have Helena and I also have Hannah Hannah Bertino <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so she uh, very much takes after her grandmother, Kaylin, with the red hair and blue eyes and has the freckled skin of Jebediah. So many of the Hanson grandkids uh, have the freckled skin of Jebediah Hanson. It's quite fun to see that get passed down. And Helena takes after her mother in that she is a fortune sim. Her passion is for sports rather than fitness, but again, quite similar to her mother. She is not a very nice sim whatsoever, but she is extremely outgoing and active and fairly playful. So her traits, she is a bit of a diva. She's ambitious. She's perceptive and she's a little bit evil. Uh, her, she also wants to own five top level businesses. So more than likely she'll kind of carry on the torch for her dad and take over his business once he retires and then probably start some other businesses as well that she will try to run in the neighborhood. I, I'm wanting her to maybe start um, a fitness shop or a sport, sporting goods store or something along those lines. I think that would be quite fun. Their second born daughter is this lovely lady, Pearl. Uh, she is a science loving sim. Oh, apparently they're leaving for school. Okay. Her one true hobby of science led her to get a little ant thing um, when she was a kid. And so she's always loved ants and nature and bugs in general. <laughs> she's also a popularity sim. She wants to have 30 successful parties in her life. She is a little bit nicer than her sister, but a very similar personality and uh, active, outgoing. She's extremely neat and uh, a little bit less playful. Her traits are that she's a perfectionist a computer whiz and lucky. I actually need to give her a third, a fourth trait because she did just age up into a teenager. And then the youngest daughter, Rebecca, uh, we did see her in the school's video. She just wants to grow up right now. She is very similar to, oh, actually a carbon copy of Helena in personality. Ooh, I might have to fix that. Uh, but yeah, so she's also a little bit on the mean side. So she is mean spirited, lucky and has a photographer's eye. And as I said, this family have never been overly rich and wealthy. So their house isn't sort of the fanciest house in the neighborhood, but I have slowly been working it up <laughs> and renovating it, decorating it and trying to make it look nice. Benjamin obviously made the dining table being a woodworking sim. And uh, they have a lot of sort of wood, wooden tones in their in their home to sort of reflect his love for uh, for wooden furniture. So we have the heavy wood bedroom set and things like that. So yeah, downstairs we just have uh, the master bedroom and non-suite and then an extra family bathroom. And then upstairs we have uh, two extremely plain bedrooms that I'm ashamed to show you guys. Like this one literally just has a bed in it and that's it. And then this one has a bunk bed and this little table with the ants in it and that's it. And then this door here is actually an empty bathroom. And that is because we have just always been a little bit poor and I need to try to get this family a little bit more money before I can finish their house. But Benjamin's passion has always really been for his business, Hanson's Hardware Shop, and I will take you there now to show you that one. Okay, so this is Hanson's Hardware Store. This is based on the old hardware store that used to be in my hometown back in the day. And it's basically just a small town vibe. Everything in this town is meant to be kind of small town vibes. I don't know. Uh, small town vibe, outdoor furnishings and gardening and landscaping store. So all of these plants here are set for sale, all the decorative rocks. We have a variety of outdoor tables, chairs, gazebos, umbrellas, all kinds of wonderful things. Solar panels as well. 
if any of our eco-friendly sims want to invest in solar panels they can eventually i would like to have benjamin invest in solar panels for his own house and then around the corner down the side here we also have a variety of pots for sale as well which just tickled me because if you've ever been to like bunnings in australia or i guess home depot in the states there's always a lot of pots for sale and then inside we just have a variety of goods for sale, mostly decorative objects, but it's all fun uh, things to decorate Sims' as homes with. And we have some compost bins, some gardening supplies, we have some gardening pots and a table and a mirror that Benjamin made. And of course we sell all of his handcrafted wooden beautiful things here, and uh, as well as some tool things. We've got some garden spritzers over here, the sprinklers for people's gardens and then in through this door is the saddest little room <laughs> where he does some extra woodworking when he can and a staff toilet there's not much in the way of a staff room here so yeah this business has been a challenge to get to rank 10 it is finally rank 10 now um but it's always like been it's a lot less profitable i guess than some of the other businesses in the hood and everything we've ever made has kind of been reinvested into this business or uh has been put towards paying off our home loans so it is nice to finally have this business at level 10 and i do have my sims come here to purchase garden um plants and, and bushes and things and uh, then another thing that i am going to start doing because I was inspired by stories and strategies here on YouTube and the way she plays is if I have any sims in the neighborhood do like an outdoor renovation of their home then Ed Benjamin is going to get a cut of money um, from whatever they spend on their on their renovation so like they'll probably purchase their gardening supplies from here so anything that they spend on on plants trees bushes etc um, Benjamin will get some of that money maybe even fences as well if i have sims build fences uh because realistically they would all sort of come from this hardware store so that's something else i'm gonna add into the neighborhood in the future and then something else that i want to do is uh have it so the sims can actually hire benjamin to come to their house and kind of design a garden for them and landscape their garden for them just to help him earn a little bit more money <laughs> uh because yeah his, his family's always struggled a bit for the the Smolians. he's like oh i just love being outside he could have his own like home improvement show tv show or something anyway so the next family for us to meet the next descendant of jebediah and kaylin is carmen hansen who is now carmen stanton carmen was a twin with her sister deborah and uh, she now lives here in this bespoke home and she has had three children and runs her own car dealership business so this is Carmen Stanton. Now, Carmen was lucky enough to catch the eye of the first ever new playable sim who moved into Hanson River after Jebediah Hanson. I did mention at the start of the video, it took me a long time to finally unlock the first extra sim by having a community lot. So the girls were actually teenagers, late in their teenagers, by the time that Eric Stanton moved into the neighborhood as a fresh adult. So Eric is a little bit older than Carmen, but the two fell in love while Carmen was a teenager and got married. Carmen has always had an affinity for tinkering and she has been fixing up cars for as long as she can remember. She started a car dealership called Carmen's Cars which has made quite a bit of money here in Hanson River. She is a family sim with the lifetime want to reach her golden anniversary which probably will happen. She has a quite a high mechanical skill and quite a lot of talent badges. Uh, she is an Aquarius and fairly well balanced and her traits are that she is friendly, vehicle enthusiast, a little childish, a heavy sleeper and handy. So she's a little bit childish because she's just always had a, an enthusiasm, a childlike enthusiasm for life and this is a trait that many of her children actually picked up off of her as well. Her husband Eric meanwhile is a businessman. When he moved to Hanson River he was able to join in the business career and he's had a very long and successful career in the business world to eventually become a business tycoon level 10. So it was thanks to him that we actually unlocked our first ever uh, extra district, extra subhood for the neighborhood and that is uh, yeah, all thanks to Eric. So Eric is a fortune sim with a secondary family aspiration. His lifetime want is to earn 100,000 smolians which I think he has already done. He he is a Pisces, he is quite active and very nice, a little on the shy side, 
but that never really held him back in his career. He likes to keep fit and his traits are that he is athletic, family oriented, a dog person, charismatic and a little bit lucky. I believe it was due to a few very lucky chance cards that he actually did reach the top of the business career. So yeah, it was, it was a little bit of luck that got him uh, to where he is today. This family do have three children. We have Gemma, Izmira, and Ken. Ken is the only child still at home, so we will meet him first. We, the other two girls have since moved out, but this is their son, Kenneth Stanton. He looks a lot like his dad, as you can see. All of their children took after um, Eric very heavily compared to a lot of the other Hanson grandchildren still just look like Hanson kids and really look very similar to Jebediah and Kaylin, but Ken, Kenna Stanton and all of his siblings look a lot more similar to their father. So he's a fortune sim and his lifetime want is actually not to become city planner, I'm gonna change that. Uh, his one true hobby is cuisine and it is his dream to open the first ever full restaurant here in Hanson River. He is going to be aging up into an adult today. It is his birthday. So that is what he's going to try to do with his life. Uh, he is a couch potato, a natural cook, a night owl, and has a good sense of humor. Um, and yeah, he is a Capricorn. So he's very neat, playful, and nice, a little lazy and a little shy. So I can see him being a very chubby, happy cook <laughs> hiding in the back of a restaurant somewhere where well, he has like wait staff, you know, who to do all the socializing and running around and picking up of food and everything. <laughs> This family have spent a lot of time uh, entertaining, uh, making friends. Eric, as a businessman, was made sure to, whenever he brought someone home from work, he would do his best to make friends with them fairly instantly. And they eventually put in this beautiful pool in their backyard, as you can see here, along with this lovely pool house. And uh, it is in here that we have our laundry, as well as a little bit of a workout and fitness area uh, for Eric, who likes to keep fit. And then we also actually built on an extra bedroom in here too, and this was Izmira's bedroom before she moved out of home. She lived at home for quite some time into being an adult to save up money to buy her own house. So wanting a little bit of independence from her parents, this is where she stayed. And as for the rest of the house, this is once again a bespoke build set house, which I have renovated and extended and just tried to make my own and <laughs> do something kind of fun with. So downstairs we have this beautiful kitchen, uh, dining room, living room and study. Upstairs we have two bedrooms. Uh, so the girls shared this bedroom in here for most of their lives. And then this was always Kenneth's bedroom. We have a family bathroom. And then we also have a master bedroom with walk-in robe and ensuite. So they have a very nice house. They're fairly well off. They also donated a substantial amount of money to the community for the schools when we were doing that sort of donation drive. And uh, yeah, they live a very, very content, very happy life. Uh, but their children have been a little bit less content and happy than Carmen and Eric. So Izmira and Gemma Stanton moved into this beautiful little starter home here in Hanson River after they finally saved up enough money from their jobs uh, to afford a down payment on this lovely house. It was a brand new, very modern build at the time. It was very exciting. And so they moved in together to start uh, their own lives. So here we have Izmira Stanton. She has her eyes shut right now. <laughs> and she was the first born daughter to Carmen and Eric. And is Mira Stanton spent most of her life bored, bored out of her brains. She is a very playful but not very nice sim, which basically means she is an absolute menace to the doubt to the town and to society in general. She likes to run around stealing people's newspapers, cackling evilly as she does so. She likes to just, you know, play, have a good time, and uh, yeah, cause mischief, mischief and mayhem wherever she goes. She is a fortune sim and she wants to become a world class ballet dancer, apparently. And uh, she is, as I said, a Scorpio. She is kind of shy, but very neat, active, playful, and not a very nice sim. Her one true hobby has just become sports, but uh, it actually <laughs> used to be games. And uh, we'll get that was because of a Ross roll that I rolled a random current scenario roll where I had to have a sim change their one true hobby. And uh, I thought that was just perfect for Izmira, who honestly is a little bit of kind of like a wild and unstable sim in general. So her traits, she is childish like her mother. She's inappropriate. She loves the cold, mostly because she's always out in winter, in particular stealing newspapers. She's a heavy sleeper and she's also a little bit hot headed. So Izmira, as I said, was just bored for most of her life. She got a job in whatever was available when she became an adult as uh, in the hospitality career. And she worked her way up to a respectable level. She's currently a front desk supervisor 
guys are earning 630 smolians a day. And uh, she and her sister Gemma were always very, very close living together. They were best friends. And so when they were both adults and they had a little bit of money, they moved out and they started their own gaming arcade. They were both gaming enthusiasts who, as I said, had spent most of their teenage life just being bored out of their minds and having nowhere to go and nothing to do here in the Hanson River. So that was their dream to start a business together and just work at it and be best friends forever. Until uh, Gemma met a man and uh, that didn't suit Izmira very well. Gemma was a family sim and so she actually went ahead and fell in love with this guy. Izmira didn't particularly approve of him. They had a big fight, a big falling out. She's no longer furious with Gemma, um, but they have, they're no longer as close as they once were. So Gemma recently moved out and took the deed to the business with her. She's going to have to pay Izmira out of her share, I think. And uh, Izmira has actually recently, you'll see I've got this want locked here, met a very interesting sim who we're going to meet in a future video. Uh, she is a bi she's a bisexual sim, I forgot to say, and uh, she met <laughs> Louise uh, in a last time I was playing her and quickly rolled the want to fall in love with her. So I'm going to tell you guys all about Louise in, in our next video, but just keep that in mind that this uh, troublemaking, kind of unstable wild sim wants to fall in love with someone named Louise. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'll tell you more about that in the future. But yeah, so Asmira now lives by herself and uh, just works and she's not really sure what to do next with her life, but she's not really a planner. She kind of just takes things as they come and uh, so we'll have to see what comes her way next. So here we have Gemma Stanton and her newly engaged fiance, Kurt Fisher. She met Kurt at the gaming arcade. He kept coming back for some reason. The two of them struck up a relationship and fell head over heels in love with one another. Uh, if we can sort of see Gemma's face here, you'll see that she does actually have brown hair from uh, her mother's side, but again, her face is very much in a clone of her father's in a lot of ways. So they have now taken out a big loan and moved into this beautiful brick home. Kurt is a family sim and uh, they will probably fill this home up with babies very shortly. Right now it's uh, very sad and empty because they really don't have a lot of money, but we do have a couch and a dining table and a little, uh, little kitchen and not much else, I think. I think I furnished, um, yeah, I furnished their bedroom quite nicely. Uh, Gemma's always loved the color purple. That's their bedroom. And then uh, Kurt actually had some nursery furniture in his inventory. <laughs> so I was like, well, that's convenient because I'm pretty sure they're going to start having babies pretty soon. But you will see that Gemma is actually not a family sim. I was wrong, but she is a hopeless romantic sim, I think. Yes, she is a hopeless romantic sim. And she does tend to fall in love with people very quickly. And she actually has a want here to give someone else named Roger a back rub. So we're going to have to see if Gemma can stay faithful to Kurt uh, throughout their lives. They do have two bolts together. Uh, I'm not sure how many she has with Roger. There he is. She doesn't even seem to have any bolts with Roger. I don't know. I might have had her check him out at one point to see if she found him attractive or something. But yeah, uh, Gemma is a hopeless romantic. She is, but she is a good sim. Uh, she's a bit of a couch potato. She has a great sense of humor. She's a natural born performer. Oh, and she has stuff in her inventory too. Where did you get all of this? I mean, why not? Okay, uh, now we have some more money, sweet. And personality-wise, she is a Scorpio, uh, but she is extremely, extremely nice. So complete opposite to her sister is Mira, who was of course extremely grouchy. Uh, she's a very, very, very nice Sim. And she's also very lazy compared to Izmira, who is very active. So it's a miracle that the two got along as well as they did for as long as they did. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, they've definitely had a big falling out. She is definitely still pretty mad at her sister, I think. Uh, yeah, so they're still best friends forever, but I don't know if that'll stick. And yeah, we are going to have to pay out uh, Izmira's share of their little business, which I will show you now, even though there's really uh, not much to it at this point in time. So yeah, just to show you guys an example of how these community lot businesses tend to start out in this neighborhood, <laughs> this is the Stanton Arcade currently. Uh, it's right next door to the Bertino Bar and Grill. And right now it's, it's literally a tiny little box in the middle of this really nice big lot. Uh, and inside we have a dartboard, it's a very fun carpet. We have a game of Clue, uh, we have a chessboard, we have a refreshment machine, and we have a tiny little toilet. And that's it, that's all there is to this place. It's only ranked two business so far. We need three more customer loyalty stars to rank up. And so this is but humble beginnings of what we'll eventually 
become hopefully like a whole bowling alley, cafe kind of teen hangout place. Uh, that's the eventual goal. But yeah, just to show you guys, this is how most of the businesses in this neighborhood started out. And a lot of them now have built up to be full fledged businesses. But uh, yeah, this is the humble beginning stage right here. Okay, and so our next family to meet here are the Long family. This family is made up of Deborah Hansen, formerly, Benjamin Long and their son Miles. So Deborah Long is an entertainer. She has always been an extremely outgoing and charismatic Sim who reached the top of her charisma skill as a teenager, as well as her enthusiasm for, uh, I think it's arts and crafts or films and literature. I don't know. Some combination of having top charisma and, and full enthusiasm in a hobby gives you the ability to enter Sims into the entertainment career. So Deborah is actually a headliner in the entertainment career currently, one level off being the top of the entertainment career. She is a popularity Sim who wants to become the icon level 10 and she is a Leo. So she's very outgoing, she's quite active, quite playful, but she's not actually very nice. So my headcanon for Deborah is that she's a comedian, that is her show, is being a comedian but she's she's not a very nice comedian and a lot of her jokes tend to sort of make fun of other people as her form of humor uh her hobby is apparently games i'm not sure if that's correct since i reset the neighborhood i'll have to double check that in my spreadsheet but that's okay and her traits she is very charismatic she has a good sense of humor but she is a little inappropriate she does tend to offend people sometimes with her jokes she's a natural born performer though and she is a dog person so she has uh had a lot of success in her career she does need some more skill points to rank up to the next uh, next level but eventually she will probably get there and of course as I mentioned she married the one and only Benjamin Long from the Pleasant View Townie pool with his long long nose <laughs> so Benjamin is a firefighter he actually entered into the firefighter career when it became available and soon we will be hopefully to building a fire station for the neighborhood, uh, but we just need some more tax money before we can actually do that. Now, Benjamin is a knowledge sim. He wants to max out seven skills. Uh, we'll just ignore his wants panel for a sec, because I'll get to that. <laughs> he is a, a Sagittarius. He's very active, playful. He's very sloppy, a little shy, and a little grouchy. Um, and his traits are that he has commitment issues. He is lucky, he is a bit flirty, he is athletic, and he is a heavy sleeper. I think he may actually have the secondary romance aspiration. Yes, he does. That's what I thought. So when we were talking about the uh, Bertino family a long time ago, when we met Amy Bertino. I mentioned that she had had some marital problems with uh, her husband Orlando and felt a little lonely and a little bit neglected by him. Well, thankfully, Benjamin Long was there to pick up the pieces and the two of them struck up an, an affair that lasted for many, many, many years. They were seeing each other secretly for a very, very long time. And honestly, I, I'm really annoyed with myself because I can't remember exactly what happened with when their relationship stopped. But I think, yes, that is what happened. I remember now. Yeah, so Amy sort of had a, a bit of a realization that she was jeopardizing her, her family, her happiness, her livelihood everything by being with Benjamin Long and so Amy actually broke off the relationship so no one to this day knows that they had an ongoing relationship an ongoing romance and <laughs> lucky for Benjamin because Deborah would not have been happy about it um you can see here though that he he misses Amy he wants to be back with Amy he loves Amy he always has been more attracted to Amy than he ever has been to Deborah and he wants to be with her he does didn't want their relationship to end and he wants it to resume the other secret that Benjamin has always kept from Deborah is that he has actually been in debt for most of their married life. He took out a massive loan to buy this house for Deborah. He took out another big loan to renovate the house when they had their son Miles and he's just never told her. So he is actually currently almost 30,000 Smolians in debt and uh, has been trying to secretly pay it back without Deborah finding out. So if again, if Deborah ever does find out about either of these things, I'm pretty sure they're probably not going to remain together. Don't know why there's a money tree in my backyard. <laughs> okay, sure. They have just one son together, Miles. Miles Long, get it? That it's, and a dog, Webster. Miles is another sports-loving sim in my neighborhood. I have so many sports hobby sims. I don't know what I'm going to do with them all. <laughs> and it's his dream to one day open up a soccer field and establish a soccer team here in, uh, in Hanson River. He's always loved soccer, 
He has his own net in the backyard that he's had since he was a wee little baby. He's always been a little bit spoiled. Um, and he is actually in a long-term relationship with Opal Zeng, who is a daughter of another family in the town who we'll meet in the next video. She's aged up to an adult, uh, so their relationship is a bit on hold right now. But uh, yeah, he'll be aging up to an adult in five days. So once I play through their next rotation, he will age up. So this family don't have any actual playable businesses for me to show you. They've always had rabbit hole careers, but yeah, their life has been far from perfect. Uh, there's always been a little bit of spice and a little bit of drama here in the long household. So we'll have to see how that turns out. Oh, hey Frank, how you doing, man? We'll have to see how their relationship pans out long term. I think Miles has always kind of known that his father is a little bit bad news and a little bit not the best guy. Um, so he's always been a little bit distant with his dad. Um, he and his mum are a little bit closer, but mostly he's actually close with Lewis Hansen, his cousin, and they are the very best of friends. <laughs> All right, how are we feeling, everyone? I promise this is the last family that you're going to meet today. This is the family of Edward Hansen, Frank's twin brother and one of the youngest offspring of Jebediah and Kaylin. They live here in this beautiful blue house and you will see they have a police car out the front because Edward is a police officer here in Hanson River, the first and only until we met Kurt and uh, we'll eventually be opening up the first ever police station in Hanson River too. So Frank's twin brother Edward was very much scarred by growing up in Hanson River with no policemen where they got robbed more than once and uh, nothing could be done about it but to hide and hope for the best. He decided to pursue a career in law enforcement to bring safety and security to the rest of the neighborhood and is currently I think level three in the police force which is a patrol officer. Not that high because I introduced a rule that is you can't become a desk surgeon within the police force until you have a desk to work at. So we need a police office, a police station to make that happen. Okay, sorry, we're joined by a special guest for the last five minutes of this video today. <laughs> so Edward Hanson, I was about to say, is a family sim. He wants to have six grandchildren. So he's had three children and he hopes they'll each have at least two, I guess. <laughs> um, as I said, he's a patrol officer level three. He is more than qualified to uh, be promoted in his career. So for sure, establishing a police station is high priority for Hanson River. He is an Aquarius. He's a very evenly balanced sim and his one true hobby is fitness. Hello, darling. His traits are that he is brave, family oriented, a dog person, handy and friendly. He is an all around very nice guy and lots of people low and love Edward Hansen. Much, much more popular than his brother Frank, who's always been a recluse. <laughs> So Edward Hansen married the beautiful Meadow Thayer, who we will all recognize as Pleasant View Stands. She is, okay, I don't know what my weather's doing. It should not be snowing, sorry. <laughs> Let's just ignore that, move on. She is an iconic townie, I think, in a lot of people's minds. Meadow is a family sim and she is a nature enthusiast. She has devoted her life to raising the babies in their, in their family and growing just a small little kitchen garden worth of food for everybody. She doesn't have a job, but she did actually just open a business which is called Meadows Munchkins and that is going to become the baby supplies furniture shop for the neighborhood uh, so that is very exciting it was a, something I only did hello <laughs> you're a munchkin aren't you um, yeah it was something I only did in the last rotation with this family so I'm really excited to play that out uh, but she is a green thumb she's nurturing she's an animal lover a couch potato and she's easily impressed so she is just a very happy sim in my game is dear meadow and uh, together they did have three children their eldest child is Lewis Hansen now Lewis is currently a very unhappy sim because he just staged up to an adult and he didn't get to go to college so he's currently not feeling great about not having been to college he wants to move out and marry someone rich <laughs> to start his own life he's an athletic sim he is uh, loves the outdoors but he's a bit of a slob and he is quite ambitious uh, his hobby is fitness as is most of the sims in my neighborhood I swear very active as I said and uh, yeah he is wanting to earn 10,000 smolians as a personal fitness trainer so my goal for Lewis is to have him open and run a gym then we have their beautiful daughter, Natalie Hansen and their other daughter, Quinn. So Natalie is a popularity sim. She is quite nice. She's an Aquarius, a bit sloppy. And her traits are charismatic, childish, athletic, and vegetarian. She currently just
just wants to become media magnate level 10. I'm not sure if I've got journalism unlocked or what I have to do to unlock it, so we'll have to see if that's possible for her. And then yes, Quinn is their youngest daughter, and again, she got the red hair genetics from Kaylin, and uh, otherwise took on Meadow's skin tone, which is a very interesting combination. She just wants to grow up right now, but she's actually another really mean Sim. I have quite a few Sims in the hood who are very, very mean, unfortunately. And her traits, she is a genius, good sense of humor, but can't stand art. So um, I think I randomized their traits based on the traits of their parents. I can't quite remember, but we'll have to see how her life and story turns out. Their house is rather sad and empty. It's not very well decorated because again, this family's always been a little bit on the poor side, but uh, they and they had a lot of kids and they had to sort of quickly build and extend their house to accommodate for their children. So uh, I think originally this bespoke house is potentially just a one story house and I extended it to be two story. But yeah, so that is uh, the final family here in the neighborhood. That is the final, <laughs> final offshoot of the Hanson family. Six children takes a long time to go through and all their descendants. Yeah, so that's going to do it for today's tour of Hanson River. There is a lot more to sort of explore with this neighborhood. There are a lot more families. There's the military subhood. There are some more community lot businesses we haven't really looked at yet. So yeah, lots more to see. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope it's not too long. Oh my gosh, I've been recording like all day. <laughs> try to get this video so I hope it's gonna be okay I'll have to see what I can do with it but if you did enjoy this video please do hit that thumbs up button and encourage me so I know I should go ahead and make the next one but yeah Hansa River is so much fun it's my my little hood you know I love this neighborhood so much and I wish I had more time to play it <laughs> For some reason, I find time hard to come by these days. Uh, so yeah, uh, hopefully I'll be able to continue it on soon. As I said, I did have to rebuild the hood and it did take a really long time to rebuild. So I've only really just gotten back into playing it um, within the last couple of months. And uh, yeah, just playing it again, like, it's so crazy how attached to these sims I feel <laughs> like they've been in my lives for the last like five years and I know I'm gonna be so sad when that first generation start to die so Amy is obviously already an elder most of the other handsome kids are close to becoming elders so yeah we might have to get a cemetery going soon I guess but yeah uh, so please as I said please leave a like if you enjoyed this video leave any comments down below uh, let me know your thoughts hit subscribe hit that notification bell encourage me show me the love I need it thank you so much much also to my Patreon supporters. I love you all and I know that I don't do enough on my Patreon and I don't, you know, make it worth your while enough as much as I should. I really, really want to and I'm going to try. To my Patreon supporters, if you would like to see maybe like gameplay pictures from this neighborhood or something like that, do let me know because uh, that's potentially something I could do with my Patreon. Maybe, but <laughs> I, so I, I appreciate you all anyway. To the rest of you, I do love you too. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.